Hello everyone, I'm Lev here, back again with another Awakening Kiosk era video. So in today's video, I'll be going over the new updates that were released today, which is on the 8th of February. And let's check out the patch notes together to see what they have introduced in the patch notes there. So let's head over to the patch notes here. And this is the schedule update notice that happened today. And let's go through them. So the update note, uh, the update time is around about today, 8th of February. 7 a.m. UTC time. And they will basically compensate us for these 100 diamonds after the update has been completed. And based from these new updates, they have introduced one legendary hero who is known as Poros, a water affinity legendary hero. And they also added two more epic heroes in the game who are known as t -Moons. It's a water affinity hero as well as sacred wind strikes, a light affinity wind strikes. And then apart from that, the Poros, the new water legendary hero, along with Talisin and Barclay will be inside this limited summoning, I think limited summoning event okay, along with the light and dark heroes and apart from introducing these new heroes, they have also changed the multi-battles heroes deployed in multi-battle can now be used in other game modes but cannot be used in the same mode so later we can try this to see how it works and because currently, right, the, the main issue I have here is uh, due to a limited amount of heroes that I built in my free-to-play account, I'm not able to use them like for other areas. Like let's say if I'm using my main heroes to farm the dungeons, I'm not able to use those same heroes like in the arena. So hopefully this will resolve this issue. And apart from that, they have also introduced a magic pass. A new magic pass featuring 6 star legendary gear which will be available available from 12 February up to 11 of March. So low spenders will be able to benefit from these uh, legendary gears in case you are not able to farm uh, good gears from the dungeons. Maybe if you are not lucky you can go through this one. And the fifth update is the team arena season 5 will be available from 13 of February till 9 of April. And also they have optimized some item description and also optimized the combat info uh, under the boss HP bar. So later we can check out what are the debuff. Maybe the debuff will be listed all below the boss HP bar. We'll need to check this out to see how it works. And apart from that, here are the list of bug fixes that they've uh, introduced. First one is the UI, the user interface. Information of summon units is no longer displayed in the battle details. Probably this one is related to the Ash Magistra. And then... Roaring Tulpa. Fix an issue where Roaring Tulpa's defensive effect weren't displayed in stage 1 to 14. For Ashlyn, they fixed an issue where Ashlyn couldn't normally acquire magic sparks after revival. So after Ms. Mitesha revived Ashlyn, maybe in the arena, she wouldn't be able to acquire magic sparks. So they have already fixed this issue. And the fourth one would be fixing an issue with where Ralph would not counter attack when he had shield. I'm not sure this shield is the guard search shield or the shield provided by heroes like Bran. So probably they also fixed this one. And they also fixed an issue where Ralph will become invincible instead of entering barrel state after taking fatal hit or fatal damage when under control. So there's a lot of uh, bug fixes with the new heroes as well. Then for the new hero Tucker which is the light rogi, fix a configuration error in the effect icons of Tucker's trait ability. Then they also do some changes on uh, Levi's battle logic, uh, error caused by the duplication of Levi's max health reduction effect. He's the only hero that is, uh, that is able to apply max health reduction, whereas like uh, Hecarine is the opposite, which is applying the max health increase. And finally, they also fix the battle logic for Brand the Brilliant, that occur when the health balance effect was applied to brand the brilliant. Alright, so let's quickly go and check these uh, three new heroes that were added in the game. Let's check them in the index. Alright, let, so let's search for the hero. One of it is Poros. Let's see, where is the legendary hero Poros? Maybe we can use the search function here. Legendary water. Do we see any new icons here? Alright, we saw something like a red icon. So this is Poros. He has a very unique character animation where he rides on this treasure chest that is like a monster inside it. It looks like a clam monster but 
with a treasure box design. So inside the, the mouth, there's a lot of gold coins that the tongue is sticking out. So probably this one is like, it's a trick to trick enemies into getting the treasure and maybe biting them. Uh, he hold, he wields a large golden key. Maybe it's to strike the enemy, the enemy down. Alright, so let's check out uh, Poros' uh, overall stats. So he has an S rating for attack, A rating for critical rate, and B rating across health, defense, and speed. So basically, he's a damage dealer. And let's go through his abilities, starting off with his trait, which is known as ana analyzed ana <laughs> an an annihilation. It's an aura. Poros increases all team members' damage against enemies below 50% health by 30%. Okay, so this means that whenever the enemy's health is below 50%, if you attack them during this state, they will receive 30% more damage. Hmm, okay. And upon ascending him, probably is the 5th ascension, this will allow him to launch a joint attack with the special ability. So this is the additional trait here. Once we have him ascended to the 5th ascension. But I'm not sure this one will work well with guild boss. Because guild boss HP is always uh, replenishing. But this one is most likely for like uh, dungeon bosses. The, the, the health will drop below 50% or so. Or maybe use for arena. Next ability is his basic. Which is known as Ravenous Bite. Deals 110% damage to one enemy. And applies attack down for one round. This one is to reduce the enemy's attack. And next will be the special ability Furious Maul that has a 3 turn skill cooldown. Deals 110% damage to one enemy and heals the team member with the lowest health for 50% of the damage dealt. Damage skills with the enemy's lost health. So the more health the enemy lost, the more damage that this special ability can do. And finally, his uh, ultimate ability is known as Gold Shower. It is his ultimate skill, uh, skill that has a 3 turn skill cooldown. Deals 200% damage to one enemy and applies increased damage taken to them for 3 turns. Damage skills with the enemy lost health. If the enemy health is below 50%, doubles the lost health base damage and applies increased damage taken version 2 to the enemy for 3 turns. So basically, this one is not really good. It's mainly used for like single target uh, enemy. And this are most likely used for like single boss boss raiding or boss dungeon or probably arena so let's see if anyone already uh, got him yet so no one have uh, uh, received him yet and the recommended set for him will be assassin and raptor i think this set is really good raptor is to provide additional focus for him to apply the debuff the attack down and the increased damage taken and assassin set allows him to deal additional damage through his abilities so based from his skill kit, he's most likely either a boss raider, something similar to Opal. But he applies this uh, debuff to them so that your heroes can do more damage to that single enemy. So it's not really useful for like heroes or I mean dungeons with mobs in maybe the first two rounds. It's not that to like really help them much, but during the boss raid, he'll be able to help them more. Then probably for arena because he got an aura here so maybe uh i think this one will work well if you use him with uh, arena to pair maybe it's like pairing him with sarah so when the enemies have dropped below 50 percent right or 50 percent then sarah deals additional ue ue damage so using her trait then she'll be able to do 30 percent more damage to that so maybe it's a good pairing with sarah uh poros Okay, let's check out his bio. So there's no bio for him as for now. Yeah, I think for his uh where he's used, no one has rated him. So most likely for dungeons, but you'll need to play that same to understand how his skills really works. And yeah, so that's basically his uh, rating for the uh, areas. The recommended set, maybe this one will be good. Maybe you can also use him in a revival set if you want to if you want him to be slightly tanky. To last longer in the dungeon uh, farming. Alright, so let's move on to the next epic hero in the game. And I think one of them is the water affinity. Let's check out the crash notes again. Yeah, one is water and one is light. So let's find the water epic hero. So 
Epic water. Let's search. Yeah, I think this one is the new icon here. Looks like a robot. So this Timons does not have any special character animation. They're just like standing there with a uh, like is it like a C looks like a C suit. And he's wielding like a large anchor from the ship. Probably this one is his uh, oxy oxygen tank to provide him with oxygen and he's diving into the sea. And I see like some barnacles like uh growing on his armor. I wonder why he's not in the visitors by sea faction. It makes more sense to have him there. Alright, so let's so that's basically his character design, fully armored in like a sea suit. Okay, yeah. So let's check out his overall stats. He has an A rating for attack and critical rate, B rating for health and defense. A, B rating for health and speed and C rating for defense. So most likely he's a squishy damage dealer. And let's check out his abilities starting off with his trait. Okay, learn assault. When an ally attacks an elite or boss and there are more than three enemies alive, Evans launches a bonus attack with the ultimate ability. And upon ascending him, he will also deal additional damage by 30% against enemies with an uh, elemental disadvantage. So probably this means is the fire heroes or fire affinity heroes. So based on this, right, the areas that has more than three enemies alive, it could be like the wave. Maybe you want to use him for speed farming the adventure mythic or adventure heart. Usually the first round, right, there are four, four enemies, four or five. So probably we can use that. And then other areas he can be used is like the Ash Magistra. Ash Magistra summons around about 5 to 7 fight inch depending on the dungeon difficulty. So he can also be used there. And yeah, so this one attack the boss. Then he will use his ultimate ability. I'm sure this one also works for... Um, yeah, this one doesn't really work for arena because usually the top tier arena, right? It's mostly like legendary and epic heroes. There's not much rare heroes, I mean elite heroes used in the arena. However, you can find elite heroes at the lower bottom tier of the arena, maybe bronze, silver or gold. But in plat platinum and diamond, right, it's mostly epic and legendary heroes. So hopefully this, the ace developers maybe can change this. So it does not only apply to elite hero. So this will give him more purpose of his trait here. Let's check out his uh, basic ability, which is known as the Anchor Sweep. Deals 110% damage to one enemy and gains attack up for one turn. Okay, this basically boosts up his attack similar to Zachary. And then we have the Rotting Rust, it's his special ability that has a 3 turn skill cooldown. Deals 200% damage to an enemy and applies attack down and defense down for 2 turns. So this one is like something similar to like Jonathan, applying attack down and defense down simultaneously, but it's only a single target or single enemy here rather than an AOE. This one has a 3 turn skill cooldown. And finally, his ultimate. Let's check out his ultimate, which is, can be triggered by his trait. Marine Fury, which has a 3 turn skill cooldown. Deals 110% damage to all enemies. Damage is reduced by 30% per additional cast within the same round. Capped at 3 stacks. Okay. So this one... Means basically, he can keep on spamming his attack. And then each time he casts this skill again, the damage will be reduced by 30%. So the first time is 110%. Then second will be like 80%. After 80%, then for the third hit, right? 80% become uh 80... Uh, 50%? Uh, 50% it will be uh 20%. So the minimum damage that he can do will be 20%. So basically this one just reduces his damage output to make him not so overpowered. So probably he can be paired with other players and I mean other heroes and keep on spamming his Galen Assault. I think he'll be really good in Rebel set. So each time he each time his uh, ally attacks, then he'll join attack with his ultimate ability to this one. And then if you gear him in a rebel set right, he can keep on stunning the keep on stunning the enemy. But this one is mostly used for like PvE mode. Because it's elite or boss. I think that's the reason why they put it is elite. 
so that he won't be used for like arena top tier top tier arena mm, like platinum or diamond okay this one is very interesting hero let's check out the ace developers oh wait, let me quickly do a summary of his skill kit so basically he can use for like pve pve content more likely for like uh, alice trial or some some sort like areas that is very difficult to take down the enemies most likely is the faction wars the faction the challenge faction where the enemies have tons of health then you need a hero to crowd control them then you can give him a rebel set and a raptor set raptor set to provide him some sufficient focus to apply the stun and also the attack down and defense down because if you kill the enemy too fast right then there's less than three enemies alive then he wouldn't be able to trigger more attacks so he's more useful like uh, more difficult heroes that has high amount of uh, HP and defense just to crowd control them. Alright, so let's quickly go over the Ace Developers guide here. So they didn't mention about Rebel set, that's interesting. They, they just mentioned to just gear him in a damage set, like every set, first set and assassin set. Every set only uh, works one time only for the first AOE attack. Then subsequent attacks, right, it won't work. For assassin set, you will keep on working, but it's at the uh, thing 50% or 35% chance to deal 50% more than uh 50% more damage, I believe. Let's check it out. Uh, this 50% more damage to the main target and 50% chance to deal additional 35% more damage. So this one will work for him, but this one only work for the main target. So assuming that Timian's uh ultimate ability this damage to all enemies, right? The enemy that he specifies will receive the additional damage from assassin set rather than all of the enemies. So do bear that in mind. The curse set allows him to deal an additional attack, basically gaining this attack up. But I don't think this will work. The curse set only allows you to apply or inflict debuff rather than providing buff to himself. So I think that there's an issue with the curse set. It does not allow you to gain positive effects on this. Alright, so that's basically it for t -Mons. Let's check out the third hero in the game, who is uh, Light Wind Strikes. So I guess Light Wind Strikes would be in Seven Woodlands because the regular Wind Strikes is also here. Okay, this one is the Light Wind Strikes. Oh, it's known as Sacred Wind Strikes. So this is the character animation. Looks like a new skin for Windstrikes, but instead of creating a new skin for Windstrikes, they just introduced a new hero, which is a light version of it. So let's do a 360 tour on her design. Really looks really nice. She's floating in air like the, like the regular Windstrikes, just a different design. This one is more of a golden and yellow form. Alright, so let's check out Sacred Windstrikes ability, starting off with a trait known as the Sacred Heart. At the start of a wave, Sacred Wind Strikes applies shield to all allies for 2 turns. The shield strength scales with Sacred Wind Strikes max health. At the end of a wave, she increases the duration of all team members' positive effects by 1 turn. So basically, she has the ability of 2 heroes or 2 legendary heroes. One is Bran. Bran applies AOE shield to all of his allies. And this one also allows Bistrek to increase the duration of all team members' positive effect by one turn. She, like, she works like something similar to Garano, who can increase her buff duration, but this one uh, increases the duration for all heroes in the game. And upon ascending her, I'm not sure if it's a uh, second ascension or fifth ascension, this will allow her to reset all her abilities cooldown. At the end of a wave, she increases the duration of all team members' positive effect by one turn and resets all her abilities cooldown which means that after the wave right her ultimate will be always ready that's amazing man at the end of the wave does it mean that it's not based on a round so it doesn't say it's round or turn it says wave so after each wave right her ultimate ability special ability are all reset i think that is what it means so most likely she's a pve content hero in order to benefit from this uh this ability here. Hmm, I think she's more suited for a PvE content. That have like multiple wave like the dungeons, like No Man's Land Dungeon and Arcade Dominator Dungeon. Not for 
like guild versus uh, uh not for like guild boss that has only like one one turn i mean like one single wave hmm i think that's basically it uh. most likely for pve content let's check out her basic ability known as the holy sanction deals 110 percent damage to an enemy and applies defense down for two turns if the enemy is affected by defense down applies attack down for two turns okay so this one is like it's, i think something similar to medicine uh mechanic so it detects if there's defense down you apply the attack down instead okay this one is really good uh, next is her special ability known as the Reju rejuvenation it's a three-time skill cooldown gives an ally for 35 percent of their max health removes one negative effects on them and applies defense up to all team members for two turns okay this one is like a mixture of like joseph and Ro rodira in in the same skill here Rodrigo is able to heal and remove negative effect whereas for Joseph he can remove negative effect and apply uh, AE defense up so they just combine these skills into one and put it in this epic hero and finally her ultimate ability known as the cleansing wave that has a 4 turn skill cooldown this ultimate heals all team members for 30% of their max health removes one negative effect on each and applies damage up to them for 3 turns so they'll be able to deal more damage and also remove one of the negative effects and then healing them so this might be good for areas where the enemy uh, applies a dangerous negative effect like uh, most likely the no man's land dungeon the shadow captive that applies the plague then she can remove them or cleanse them away she has two abilities that can cleanse I think this is the first epic hero or first first hero in the game that is able to cleanse negative effect from ultimate as well as the special. Usually uh usually heroes only has like one ability to remove the negative effect, but this one has two two of them. But this one's really interesting. So based from a skill kit, right? She's like a match like a matchup of healer, cleanser. Uh, debuffer and booster the defense up booster as well as the damage up booster as well so she's more like a supporter hero and a debuffer hero at the same time making her quite useful in like many areas in the game but if you want to specialize her uh, you'll need to test her out to see how she performs here so it's really interesting she's like a so if you obtain her right she can be used in multiple areas in the game based on from her variety of abilities here you can apply defense down attack down to reduce the enemy's defense so that they receive more damage then the enemies will receive uh will do less damage to your heroes they can cleanse them heal them and strengthen their survivability so she can be used in i think most areas in the game and let's check out the the ace developers recommended gears for her so they recommended Terra Set, Radiant Set, and Curse Set. Terra, uh, Terra Set allows her to boost up her health by 50%. So she'll be able to provide more healing. But I will recommend to just gear her in a Fate Set. So each time she heals, right, she'll be able to generate a shield to, to the hero. So Fate Set will be much better here. Then for Radiant Set, just basically to speed in her to go first in the team. And then Curse Set allows her to, to launch a bonus attack. So... I think Curse also makes sense because once she applied the defense down, right, then she can also apply the attack down at the same time. Basically, she can do two, two of this if the curse set procs. So this one also makes sense here. So if you want to build a more like damage rule of the wind strikes, then you can gear her in a curse set. But she wouldn't do much of her uh because two of her skills like, are mostly supportive and only her basic is doing the attack so she, her curse set wouldn't do much for your heroes here because if she is always doing her ultimate and then special then go to the next wave ultimate and special she won't be doing this holy sanction basic ability that much so curse set would be a uh, not a very useful gear set for her ideally if i will build a supporter healer i will gear her in, in a fit set as well as uh, maybe radar set or terra set 
or a guard set to boost up her survivability in case the enemy's nuke is too powerful for her to survive. And yeah, I think basically that's it for her skills. So mostly she's likely to use in all in all areas in the game, but not for the hardest one like Gemini Dragon. Gemini Dragon is too difficult. Because this one doesn't have ability to cleanse away the berserk. But we really need to uh, play that set to fully understand how it works. Maybe reading this description alone will not really uh, give us more details. But after testing her out, then we will know how to use her in those areas in the game. And let's check out the other features that they have introduced like the... What's that called? The multi-battle one. I'm really interested in this multi-battle and see how the Ace developers have already fixed them. Heroes deployed in multi-battle can now be used in other game modes. Alright, so let's try that out. Okay, let's say if I were to farm the... What's that now? Probably there's Ash Magistra, right? So let's assume that we are farming Ash Magistra, maybe like stage 9. I'll just enter... I need to skip formation, right? Oh, no, multi-battle here. Let's try like two of them. Let's fight. Okay, maybe I'll just remove her crane and put in my Hulans. Okay, let's try this. Hulan Joseph. Okay, let's try this. And okay, now, we'll use this uh, damage dealers, Celine as well as Natalia, in the arena. Alright, let's go to backstage. Okay. So let's check out whether we can use those uh, heroes that we are using to farm the Ash Magistra right now. Let's go to combat arena. Alright, maybe we'll just tackle this, uh, this first arena defense team. Oh wow, we can use them now! That's good! As a free-to-play player, right? I don't have much heroes yet to be, be used. If they are using my heroes, then I won't be able to, to do farming and arena at the same time. Alright, so let's try this team out. Wow, it really works. So, that's a great improvement for the multi-battle. Last time, I was like wondering why do they do a half big multi-battle system where we can't even use the heroes that we are using to farm the dungeon. But actually, this one should be the multi-battle system that they should introduce in the first place rather than a half big system. Alright, so that's basically it. Let me try to refresh and do one more battle here. This is really good. And I wonder if we can... Can we perform two, two different multi-battle in different dungeons? I want to try that out as well. To see if we can like farm multiple dungeons at the same time using multi-battle. Okay, this is done. Alright, let's check out the other dungeons in the game. The dungeon here. Let's say, assuming that I want to farm, let's say Queen of Tides. Let's say I go to maybe stage 10, multi-battle, okay. So it says that you cannot use multi-battle because uh, it's already been used by another system. So that is another limitation there, where we cannot like uh, do parallel uh, dungeon farming at the same time. However, you can do like the same dungeon farming, maybe like stage 9, enter using the manual mode here. And then you, we, we use, oh, we cannot use back the same hero, so I see. So basically, we cannot select like Celine, Natalia in the same team here. Alright, so let's check out in the other dungeons. Can we do that? Let's say we head over to Queen of Tides. Maybe stage 9. Uh, let me enable the, uh, disable the skip formation. Let's enter. Okay, so basically, if we were using these heroes in dungeons, right? He cannot reuse spec the same hero for dungeon mode. So if you're using multi battle in dungeon, we cannot use spec the same heroes in dungeon. Only for other areas or other game modes like Arena and Astral. Let's go to Alice Trial to see if it works there. So we know that we can use uh, the same the same heroes in Arena, but not in the dungeon if you're using multi battle in dungeons. So let's try uh let's try Alice Trial here. I haven't started my endless trial. Let's do the level 61 because my current in my current state, right? I'm still not able to do level 70. It's too difficult. Okay, let's start with level 60 here. Let's do one battle and see if we can use that same heroes. 
Okay. Right, so this is flow one by Team Cole. Get this guy as hard. Okay, now let's try to fight one of these gangsters. Okay, click enter. Can we spec Celine and Natalia here? Yes, we can. We can select Celine and Natalia here. Let me select my heroes. Spells. Alright, let's go. Oh wow, they have introduced a new uh, screensaver that the RTA for Mitasia. So it seems that we can use these heroes here as well. Okay, so we are able to do endless trial and arena when we are doing uh, multi battle farming. Alright, so let's see if we can do multi battle in the adventure mode. Oh wow, the farming has already completed. Let me farm again. Stage, stage 9. Let's do 10 of them. Wonder if we can multi battle the, the adventure mode or not. Or oh, is it multi battle is only for one area in the game? Let me collect my achievement rewards. So let's head over to the adventure. Let's see if we can perform multi battle here. Big battle. Okay, we can do single bat single mode battles here. Let's try multi battle here. I see. So this means that multi battle can be only used for one area in the game, and it and you can't use multi battle in other parts of the game like uh, adventure or areas that supports multi battle and i think this would be the same for white tower common because white tower common is also using uh what's it called multi battle if you have already completed that particular void tower floor from floor 1 to floor 100 okay so that's basically it for the multi battle system basically they allow you to reuse heroes in other areas in game but there's some sort of limitation that you cannot use multi battle in dungeon then multi battle again in other areas of the game and yeah all right so let's check out the other notes here see what else we miss out so we have already covered the new heroes the magic pass will be out in a few days time so we can't see it now then team arena item description i think the most the most uh, sought after would be the multi battle. So multi battle is uh, has some good has some good improvement there. Oh yeah, I want to check out the the dungeons or roaring tulpa. I want to see no, I want to see the inf no. This one is already it's normal. Did this mention something about the icons or the the boss? Oh yeah, the point number seven. Combat optimize the info display under the his, the boss HP bar. What does that mean? Does that mean the boss debuff? Let's uh let's do a quick check. I do not have any debuffers on this account. Oh yeah, I have one. Ganjelo. Okay, let's try out uh let's try out the Queen of Tides because I have heroes that can apply. Uh let's try stage 10. Enter. Let's try Ganjelo. So this is my current team for farming stage 10 in the Queen of Tides. I have a Ganjelo, Santis for my poison damage dealer, Hitoshi for the first, first second of uh, Killerus, and Rodira as the healer. So let's check out what's the main difference in the boss area or boss wave. Alright, so we are now on the base boss wave. Let's see what's the new changes here. Okay, let me put it on manual mode. Let's see what's the... Is there new changes? No, basically just mention point. Okay, let's check out, right? Queen of Tides. It shows the health bar. This is normal. Then they show the list of the debuff here. Poison. This damage based on max health at the end of turn. 
But it doesn't it does not show how many stacks here correctly. This one is just show the all, all of the poison that has been stacked on the boss. It seems like there are two types of poison. What else do they show? No positive effect. This is the still the same. I think last time is we need to like press and hold is it? Press and hold. So this one allows us to like click on the skill. Then just scroll and check the boss skills. The one that's interesting is the one that is uh this one, tsunami. No. Oh, okay, blessing of the Empress. So the passive skill is represented with this glowing border that is swirling in a clockwise fashion. I think there's not much changes to the boss info here. Let's check out the info tab. Nothing much here as well. Previously, right, they would be able to show us like multiple stacks of poison, but now they all combine it into one. So we couldn't really tell how much stacks are there. I think there's not much changes done to the UI on that uh, boss helper. Okay, if you were to click on this uh, boss icon, right, we can see the number of poison. Maybe the amount of poison stacks, right, is represented in like these stacks, so we can see more poison here. I think we can calculate the number of poison based on this. Uh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 stacks of poison. But it doesn't show like what's the number of stacks. Maybe like 2 or 1. So probably this is their improvement. So that we can calculate like how many poison stacks are there. Alright, I think we can... Yeah, I think we have covered all of the interesting points in these patch notes. So what do you guys think about the patch notes that they have introduced today? Which one is uh, most interesting to you? For me, it will be the multi-battle since as a, as a free-to-play player, right? I'm not able to use my limited heroes in other parts of the game. And not so restricted on... Like my heroes is currently used in the multi-battle, then I can't be doing, in, uh, doing anything else in the game. While waiting for the heroes to farm the dungeon completely so one is the multi battle for the new heroes i think the most one the most interesting one would be timon's i think you need to see how he works or so maybe he can keep on spamming his ultimate ability there. and with the rebel set he can stun all the enemies there then for sacred wind strikes just like a jack of all trades can do multiple things and then we have poros poros doesn't seem like a real like game changer hero more likely like a damage booster but nothing much uh, interesting there just except for just boosting up your hero's damage output whenever the enemy's hero health drop below 50% alright so that's basically the end of my video covering the three new interesting uh, updates that was introduced in this uh, patch which is the, the three new heroes as well as the multi battle system what they have improved on that and finally the combat uh, information displayed under the boss HP bar. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, do give this video a, a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button as well as ringing the notification notification bell to stay up to date whenever I upload a new video on the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!